Welcome here to an amazing folks of brand new Awakening the Unawakened Souls episode. This is your host, Alice Martinez. Hope you're doing great today, actually. Um, uh, again, I just had a, a nice week. Uh, you know, again, a pretty busy one. But, you know, it's time for us to get a brand new episode rolling. So, well, in today's episode, um, what if I told you your subconscious mind always has your back? Many won't even know what I'm talking about. Maybe I should begin with that first. Spoiler alert, this will be a very vague explanation, but it does its job. <laughs> well, we can think of our mind like a network, in a way. The visible part of the mind is what we call the conscious side. Meanwhile, there's an even deeper and greater side yet to be discovered by most of us. The so-called subconscious brain. Long story short, I mean everything and anything that lies below everyday types of thinking. Having said this, let's start with the show. According to the Oxford Dictionary, it defines the subconscious as the part of the brain of which one is not fully aware but which influences one's actions and feelings. So just to take for instance, when you have to make a decision, um, and you just have that feeling that something may or may not go wrong, uh, or correct, sorry, that something may go wrong. And if that happens, then it's your instinct, the one that told you this. And this is what we call the subconscious. And in a way, our subconscious mind really has a great potential that most of us aren't aware of. And this is what we're going to be talking about in today's episode, guys, on how the subconscious can be trained and will we even go with the second episode of a uh, second part of this episode because it's pretty damn big one to talk about so we won't be covering all today well anyway the workflow is pretty simple and it's just turning the subconscious brain on involves using special techniques that trigger this hidden part of the mind and many of us may be wondering um hey which kind of techniques are we talking about we're mostly referring to SVT, which stands for Subconscious Visualization Techniques. And this can be found all over the internet. And of course, there are hundreds of books um, that cover the, the, the topic. And I, I do recommend one, which is Your Subconscious Brain and Can Change Your Life. And it talks about overcoming obstacles and how um, being able to fully understand how brain works can really make a difference in our daily life. And, you know, um, there are people who are able to fully master this, this skill. And I'm completely convinced, I'm absolutely convinced that these people um, are able to keep calm in almost every situation or maybe just um, are able to modify what they think or how they feel about something and it is because the power of um suggestion and how it makes your brain look different it's a really um i would say interesting correlation to to see and to um investigate because you know um we all know what a placebo effect is and in fact suggestion is the placebo effect that transforms that sugar pills into potent treatments. Yeah, the same kind of effect. So we've been using this placebo effect for almost, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of years throughout history and throughout human humankind. And it's often referred to them as something trivial. Well, we should really check them out because it's, it actually proves how the brain and how the mind can influence our body and how our well-being and how everything is not just treatment, treatment, treatment and take some pills and medication, etc. There can be a cure and maybe just a way of treating different diseases which may not have to do with taking pills. It's just maybe a, a matter of relaxing or... I don't know, maybe just take it in with yourself and try to stay conscious, right? So studies have proven that open-label placebos 
are equally effective, if not more, than traditional placebo studies. So wh wh what I'm talking about now is just um, imagine yourself um, going to a, a doctor, right? And they tell you, well, take this pill or take this, um, yeah, this, this, this pill, which is, by the way, a placebo. So it won't actually change anything, like scientifically speaking. But take it, because it will do you good. And, you know, you may find yourself better, feeling better. And that's how it is. So this is what they were telling those uh, patients, which were, again, um, collaborating with this study. And, in, and it turned out to be that these, these patients, even though they knew they were taking a uh, placebo effect, thanks to that suggestion that was made by the doctor, it had the same, again, or if not more, um, benefits than a normal placebo study would have. A normal placebo study just, is just like, take this, it will help you. And they don't tell you that it's a placebo. So that's how it is. So that's interesting too. And open-label placebos have had a positive effect on IVS, depression, back pain, ADHD, and hay fever. So there's actually some uh, quite a, a big amount of diseases. No, not diseases, but, you know, um, things that we can treat with these techniques. And even the pill color makes a difference because our brain associates different colors with different and with certain effects, making it more or less effective. So let me say that again. Um, this means that maybe your brain, as you said, is color red with, um, I don't know, being more effective. Others think blue is, is not so effective, or let's say pink. So this is how the brain works, and this is how the brain is being able to connect colors with actions and with, um, and with the results being effective or not. So again, it's just all inside our mind. And it's crazy how um, modern medicine is not considering this that much. We're based, like, our, our medicine and our uh, way of looking at things is just based on symptoms and based on, well, this hurts you? Right. So you have to take this. Or um, you're having these, these, and this, and this, and this symptoms, then you have this. So this is how we look at the uh, at our body right now. Well, maybe if we looked like inside of us, like, you know, just checking in with yourself, you might find even more answers. So, I, in order to make, because, you know, you, you know, we saying like, wow, this is incredible. This has a tremendous effect and this might be worth looking at. So how how can we make our subconscious brain work? And it's, it's pretty simple, but at the same time, difficult or complex, let's say complex. Because you have to have a positive and let's say metaphorical approach rather than a negative and rational one. Because you already know what your thoughts can do, don't you? So again... It's a bit difficult to have not having a negative or rational one because you often tend to think about this these techniques as well. This is just impossible. This won't help me. This is not going to work. Well, maybe it does. Maybe it does work. Maybe it's just yourself that you're blocking yourself and you're blocking your brain from actually trying to help you. Maybe you should open that door. So, because remember, the subconscious brain is always looking out for you. And again, maybe you don't believe me, but have you ever run into a huge problem? Problem that you simply couldn't solve. Maybe you took a shower or you had a, a nap. Did that help? Because I'm convinced it did. At least it, it happens to me. Maybe I'm working on a maths problem. Or I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm just wondering about how to do things. And then in the same exact moment that I stopped thinking about it and I'm just and then I stop active, actively focusing on that issue. It just comes to my mind. And, it, and I say, this is how I have to do this. Or this is how I'm going to help. I'm going to solve this. 
So this is again the subconscious brain doing its, its, its job. This part of the brain has the unique ability to activate or deactivate all sorts of structures and systems in the brain. Oh, so it has the power of changing the top-down processing that makes sense of sensory data coming in from the bottom up. So what does this mean? So it means that if you can change top-down processing, then it really makes a difference. Because in fact, you may not be able to see a cigarette at all. So, I mean, imagine how crazy that would be. Maybe you're addicted to smoking and you, you're able to block that image from coming into your brain. Maybe you don't see cigarettes anymore and that's how you finally get around that problem or that addiction. So if the top is convinced, the bottom data will be overruled. And that's interesting. That's interesting. Because there is a mind-body connection that is also has a stunning influence in how you live. Because if subconscious channels operate below conscious awareness, this also means that positivity or suggestions planted in the subconscious will feel like all that change just happened, you know, effortlessly. Amazing, right? It is amazing. So that's all for today's episode. And I really hope um, you consider um, the subconscious brain more. Uh, chances are we'll be going with a, a second part of this episode and we'll be speaking about different um, waves of brain waves, how they work and which one does it think. So, well, for the moment, I think we can call it a day for now. Consider leaving us a five-star review on Apple Podcast if you haven't already done so and if you have enjoyed. Meanwhile, see you in the next episode and have a nice week. This is your host, signing off. <laughs>